so here we are. We're going to start now our 12th episode. We've been going through all these references to this title Muhammad, and we found an enormous amount of other names that are odd that we talked about and that are in the Quran. We're going to come up now with another name, and this, I understand, is huge. Uh, Mel, Mel, who's over here, has gone ahead and put it up on his site, and what you've, you've broken all records, haven't you, with what you're going to introduce here. Over 6,000 yeah, this... already on your site, which is huge for you. And we want to see why this is so huge. Now, I have not seen what he's going to tell me. I have not heard. So like you, this is going to be the first time I'm hearing it. I'm writing notes as we go because I want to be surprised by what he's come up with. I want to see why everybody is jumping to this video, especially this video. And it has something to do with the name Aziz. Now, that's all I'm going to say because I'm going to give it over to you, Mel. Let's see what you have to say and what you're going to tell us. So if uh, people have been following the, the series so far, they would understand that what, the argument that I've been making is that Islam is essentially a messianic religion. And it has been referring to the Messiah and has been referring to Mahmud. But the name that we're going to see today, which is straight out of the Quran, is actually another messianic title, which confirms it's just further evidence for the argument that actually what we're looking at is a messianic religion and it is very different from what we think it is today okay um, so real without quickly, real quickly what do you mean by messianic well the idea that the the people who were associated with the beginnings of islam were expecting a messiah to come along that's right. actually what it's all about it's not about a prophet as such it was actually about a messiah um, and so obviously there's two groups of people that are waiting on the Messiah. The Christians are obviously waiting for Jesus to return, but Jews were expecting the Messiah to come for the first time. Yeah. So they have, from, from their point of view, they haven't had the, the Messiah yet. At least okay. some Jews, you know. So we're looking at another synonym for Mahmud and Messiah in the Quran, which is Aziz. All right. And uh, remember how we said in earlier videos that Mahmud meant beloved, lovely, the praise one, etc. Well, it turns out there is another word in the Quran that actually means that as well, which is Aziz. Um, and uh, the, the only issue is that it's hidden because of a missing diacritical mark in the current version of the Quran. And that's Aziz. Now, to get back to Aziz, we, we have to recognize that there are two deceptions going on first one is a false translation so if you look at this here from uh, surah 930 you can see in the arabic that uzair is there in the arabic currently but if we see the translation this is where the deception comes in they have falsely translated it from uzair to ezra which are different names um, and they also make the claim that the jews say ezra is the son of allah which is not true did Jews ever hold to the belief that Ezra was the son of God well if you go on to any forum this is one example of a Jewish forum that I looked at and they asked the question and they essentially all came back and said no there's no record of any such thing you know so this is not nonsense um so the short answer amongst Jews is simply no the Quranic claim is wrong and proves the Quran is false but the question is what lies behind it do you want to come in on this, Jay, before I continue? No, but this is this is a common a mistake that we've heard many years about Ezra. They're always saying you need to go find Ezra. And I we've always under mis did not I had no idea of where you're gonna go with this because this is gonna kill two birds with one stone, because we have always had a a, a block as blockages to know where to go with this Ezra claim that the Quran's making as a son of God. When we now know that looks like what you're going to tell me is this, we've been going up the wrong track. We've been going the wrong route. So I'm all ears. Let's see where you go with it. I'm, 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 I'm going to see how you're going to answer that question. Okay. So deception number two is hide a word in plain sight by losing a diacritical mark. Now, this deception could be intentional or it could be accidental. But if we were to trust the Islamic tradition that says that everything was was uh, preserved through the oral tradition, none of this should have happened if they all know exactly what the words in the Quran are through the oral tradition. So this should not be happened, but it, it has happened. So 
Can you spot the difference, Jay, between these two words? Well, yes. What the there is a dot of which should be uh, azir. It's now aziz. There is a dot above the last a letter on the left, and that should not be there. Exactly. Now, the the word as it stands today in the Quran, uh, if you look at the half Quran, you have uzair, but actually, if you put a dot above what is the ra now, it becomes aziz, totally different word. Now, this is from AJ Juice's paper, uh, his, his recent paper um, called Iran's Poison Arrows, and he, he says in Arabic, uzair is, as you can see there, uzair as it's spelled in Arabic, but if it was marked incorrectly, now he amusingly spelt incorrectly wrong to make a point we can recognize the word incorrectly there even though it's spelled very incorrectly he says it can read aziz if you put that dot above it now interestingly it means beloved holy or praised which is a familiar term used in context in the appearance of the messianic Mahmed. so we we've seen this already when we looked at Mahmed and what it means these are the meanings that is connected with Mahmed. Now, it should be pointed out, Aziz also has other meanings as well, like strong, but it does carry that meaning uh, and, you know, beloved, holy, praised one, etc. And uh, so therefore, it is another messianic title. It is one that's referring to the Messiah. Now, what's also interesting is there was a sixth century inscription in, in Yemen, where it has the word Mahmed, the praised one. Okay, so it has a similar meaning to that, um, Aziz. So it's a, you, you could wipe out the word Aziz and put and replace it with Mahmed. It would essentially mean the same thing. Now, so if we go back to that um, verse 930, we can see it says, the Jews say Aziz is the son of Allah, while the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. You can see now that it actually makes an awful lot more sense. You've got two alternative messianic titles aziz and messiah so all it's saying there is the jews are using one particular title aziz and the and the christians are using the word messiah so it's kind of like this you say tomato i say tomato the jews say aziz is the son of allah while the christians say the messiah is the son of allah aziz has the equivalent meaning to Mahmed and to messiah Aziz and Mahmed are interchangeable words. Jews say the word Aziz or Mahmed when they mean Messiah, whereas Christians use the word Messiah, typically. This might indicate that according to the Quran, that the Mahmed movement is principally Jewish and not Christian. Um, this doesn't preclude the possibility of cultural appropriation of the word Mahmed and linking it with the crosses found on coins in the 7th century. So what you have in the Quran is a suggestion that the word Aziz is a Jewish term for the Messiah that they're using. Um, but we also see that the leaders were putting Mahmed on the coins as well. Um, and these very likely were Christians because of the, the crosses. So there's kind of a, like a, there's a definite messianic, um, you know, message there in that passage. Now, <clears throat> The, the problem with all of that is this is kind of um, just using a bit of intuition. We're, we're just recognizing that if we just put a dot over the word, we see that it becomes Aziz and it actually makes more sense now. So the question is, can we prove that Aziz was the original word and not Uzair or even Ezra? Um, now, luckily for us, we, we did get evidence in an early manuscript and I got a message from Odin Lafontaine. He said, I've just reviewed manuscript uh, Vetstein to 1913, one of the oldest and most complete manuscripts containing a, approximately 85% of the Quran. Um, he says this stating is challenging due to extensive rewriting. You might be familiar with it. It's an invaluable resource that offers insights into the Quran's development. The manuscript includes very old folios, potentially from the late seventh century, based on the calligraphy style and others written later resembling the Kufic script. Um, diacritical marks are inconsistently applied, often missing, with some added later, similarly for the vocalization marks. I think a key thing here, because I can, can um, sort of anticipate what the pushback might be on this. I think it's, it's more um, 
explainable if dots are left out where the where the word is obvious. But what is not explainable if the word is meant to be ooze there and someone goes and intentionally puts a dot above the word that that doesn't make sense, especially if ooze there was the intended word. I can certainly uh, allow for people forgetting to put a dot ab above a word, but what I can't understand is someone intentionally put in letter where it shouldn't be. But with that out of the way, um, he mentions that this manuscript can be found at this location. Um, and here's a little bit more information about it, but let's go and have a look at the the manuscript to the folio. And if we zoom in, then we can see that there's a dot there. So if you look at the little uh, yellow rectangle, there's a red dot to the left of it. And just to the right of that, you'll see a dot. And that's the, the part that gives you the Z letter. So you have a Z's. There's a gap between the two parts of the word, but it actually reads a Z's. Um, do you want to come back on that, Jay? No, this is good. So what you're saying basically here is if this is now, I, I would be a little careful about dating it to late seventh century. This is a yeah, much yeah. Script. by fact the fact that it has so many diacritical marks, this would probably make it even late eighth century. This would be post Tope copy. The Tope copy has is starting to introduce the red dots, and that's mid eighth century. I would post this late eighth century so i don't i would i wouldn't agree with odon like on that i'm not sure where odon is even coming up with that date nonetheless this is eighth century so it's one of the earliest manuscripts what we're more interested in the red dots are probably later this is not a red dot we're looking at though notice these are part of the original script the, they're black dots now remember this took a while for the dots to be canonized you're looking at some of the original dots there so ju just be careful about the red dots people think that's all we're looking at no we're looking at the black dots above the two r's when it may when you have a dot above the r the the r sound makes it a z sound so that's why it's now though that would be a z's there and you know jay just to follow up what you said if if this is mid 8th century or even late 8th century that is even more damaging because it means that there's a deafness uh, use of Aziz, you know, for um, for a good chunk of time before it it got removed, um, and probably it got removed precisely because the the story had changed. They're gone from a messianic movement to one where they have a prophet in a, a, a fantastical place called Mecca in the middle of nowhere. Uh, where there's no water and but yet there's supposed to be this large community uh, all familiar with Syriac texts and so forth yeah. so well, it's that's a whole other discussion and that's it is especially <laughs> you and I have had and that is that almost even this manuscript these manuscripts would have been under the control of the Ottomans from the late 13th century early 14th century on so they would have had access to all of these they could have expunged that dot the fact that that's not expunged suggests clearly that that was the way it was intended. What we need to do is we need to go to the other manuscripts, the top copy of the Samarkand, the Ma'il, anyone that has chapter 9, verse 30, and see if that dot is there. I would suggest it's not because that's pre-dotting. It would We need to then look at the later ones, like uh, the ones that, like to begin, which comes later, those manuscripts, we, where dotting is now being formed, and see if they have the dot above the R, making it the Z. Yeah, I, I think... Um, the the important thing is, you know, there was an inconsistency in, in the application of dots. I suppose the key thing is which would have come first in terms of what was the intentional word to begin with. I would suggest that um, Uzair makes no sense. A C's in the context makes more sense. So that was the word that was intended. And if the dot got lost over time, that's probably true um, error scribal error which happens or, all the time we have scribal yeah. errors in most of the manuscripts some of them are yeah. intentional some of them are accidental yeah but this would actually have a theological effect because it's essentially they're losing the real meaning of that sentence because it is a double messianic title that's been referred to and Absolutely. with that meaning lost it's 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 changing the whole sense of the meaning of the sentence so uh, that's a little bit more on the Z and the the Ra there. Um, let me just go on to next part. Um, 
it mentions there that the ya uh, lacks the two dots underneath. That's part of that inconsistency, but it's unmistakably a ya, as the other ya on the page also lacks those points beneath them. And uh, I want to just finish by thanking um, Odin for helping us with that, with with all of that information. So thank you, Odin. And I'll come back to you. <laughs> I can see why now. Now that makes, I've written a whole page of notes here on this. This is going to be fun to see how the Muslims react to this uh, because they have always claimed that we have got it wrong with Ezra and we're putting Ezra as another son of God. When in reality, no, it's not Ezra, it's not Uzair, it's Aziz, which is the very same title we're used, we're finding for Muhammad, which is in the Old Testament 11 times, which was started by the Ugaritic uh, uh, writing for the praise one, uh, altogether lovely, even the Messiah. So it's, it's this idea that the Aziz is the Messiah. Here's something I wanted you to go one step further then. Because in chapter 12 of the Quran, when Joseph is captured in captivity, notice what happens to him. Who is the one that's responsible for him? The great Aziz, the very same word. Now, we now to go back to chapter yeah. 12 and see how that is dotted. Because I would uh, suggest that if you look at, if I'm not talking about modern day. Modern day, it's Aziz. But they don't realize what that is. So th that's another one. What's Aziz doing in chapter 12 then? Did they get that confused? And yeah. what is the original writing for that word in chapter 12 of the story of Joseph? Because the messianic figure, there's Aziz, who is the leader there in Egypt. What's he doing as the messianic figure in Egypt? Obviously, it looks like they got that confused too. So coming and going, not just with chapter 9, I would suggest this is really going to hammer and hang chapter 12 as well, the story of Joseph. Absolutely. Yeah, it has huge repercussions. You're, you've probably some of you have heard this already on Mel's channel. This is the first time you're hearing it here. I'm sure it's going to be on Sarah International. Mel, you're going to have to go there and introduce it there as well. So now you've, you will have heard it three times. Let's see how you respond to this. If this is so, if this is the Aziz that we're looking for, if this is the word that also parallels Mahmed, which is both, both of which are referring to messianic title, it could be a Jewish messianic title or it could be a Christian, a second coming of Jesus a second time. Both are sub, are both are correct. And if you're borrowing, remember, the Quran is borrowing everything. Everything that it has is borrowed from other sources. And those sources are all up in the seminaries, up in places like Damascus and in Kufa and in Petra, um, as we're going to find with uh, the Jewish uh, authority. This would make sense that these words, not only these ideas are being borrowed as well, the words are being borrowed as well. And whether it's a Jewish source for Aziz, whether it's a Christian source for the Messi for the second coming of Christ, in both cases, this is not referring to Muhammad, the man that was way down in the south, that was way down in the Hijaz. No. It looks like this is referring to Jesus or the, the the Messiah that the Jews are still waiting for now. Good stuff. Great stuff. Love these. Lovely. Uh, this is going to be something. What are we going to do next? Okay, so what we're going to look at next is we're going to look at evidence for a chain of Muhammad's. And to, for that, we're going to look at St. John of Damascus and some Chinese sources. So that's wow. going to be okay. a so bit of a re reveal. Good stuff. We're going back to Damascus and we're going all the way over to China, uh, way over in the Far East. Good stuff. Okay. Until next time, folks, do your comments to write down, write down below us. Put your comments there. Let's see where you come back is on this. This is Jay and our my good friend Mel over and out. <music>